All right, this next problem deals with density. Um, and if we note here, uh, one of the reasons I like to do this problem is because this is going to be an example where we're trying to convert the units on both the top and bottom of this dimensional analysis problem. And so up until this point, I've only really dealt with situations where the units you're trying to change are starting off in the numerator. But in this problem, we're going to have units in both the numerator and the denominator that we're trying to change. So I am going to uh, start this off by first recognizing that if we're trying to calculate density, that density is equal to the mass of something over the volume that represents that mass. And our goal here is to get our mass in grams and our volume in milliliters. Now, you'll notice in the problem, they gave us a volume that's in quarts, and they gave us a mass that's in pounds. And so for some of you that want to approach this from a very simple sort of standpoint, we'll probably be like, well, I can just convert my pounds of mass into grams and do like one set of conversions to do that. I can then convert my volume in quarts into milliliters, and I can do one set of conversions to do that. And then once I've converted both those numbers into the right units, then I can just plug them into density and do mass over volume. And yes, that would work. But doing it that way means you're going to miss out on a very important technique that's going to be important later on. And that is how do we start with the units being wrong in the top and bottom of this expression and use dimensional analysis to convert those units as they're already set up. Um, so don't convert the two different values separately and then bring them together to get density, but actually express density in terms of the units that were given and then try to convert those units into the units that we want. And so that's the approach I'm going to use with this problem. So this means that I want to start off by figuring out what the density is with the units that I'm being given. And I can actually calculate this number if I want to. So I'll do that up here real quick so we can see. You know, I could plug in the 9.26 pounds, which is my mass, right? So if I'm trying to solve for density here, I can do 9.26 pounds. And I can divide that by the volume in quarts. So 4.00 quarts. And if I was trying to solve for what this density would be in pounds per quart, I could just divide those two. So 9.26 divided by 4.00 gives me a value of 2.315 pounds per quart, right? And so recognize there, um, sig figs wise, there should only be three sig figs. So really this should be 2.315 with the one being the last sig fig. So maybe you even would uh, round that to 2.32 pounds per quart if this was the answer we were interested in you know that that would be you know your final answer if that's all we needed to do um, but note here that uh, this then leads to units that are um, I think they call them compound units where we have one unit in the numerator and one unit in the denominator and it's important to recognize that when you're given a value like this you can express that still as a conversion factor so as a fraction so I'm going to use the number where the last sig fig is highlighted where I can say, okay, this, this statement here is telling me that there's 2.315 pounds in every one quart. So just notice there that you can then express the value you get from solving for density into a conversion factor that relates the number of pounds for every one quart. And that is um, something you can you can do. Um, in this situation, uh, you would only pay attention to the sig figs on the number in the numerator. The one on the bottom, because you kind of got that from, from doing the math, the one would just be an exact number that would have infinite number of sig figs. So you're not really going to consider that there's, you know, only one sig fig in the denominator here if you were doing this calculation. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I did that little bit of an aside because I know there's some people that may prefer to do it that way. And I think this is also a very important technique to point out that when you divide, you know, uh, when you solve for density in this way and you, you come up with this value with a compound unit, that you can still express that density then as a conversion factor using those values. But this whole thing up top here is actually unnecessary for this problem because our goal here is not to solve for the density in pounds per quart. It's to get the pounds and the quarts into grams 
and, and milliliters. And so we don't have to do this step. All we really need to do is just figure out what our starting point needs to look like. And our starting point is actually going to be the expression for density that we had up top here. So I'm just going to write out 9.26 pounds per four quarts, and I'm going to recognize that, okay, now that I have these set up this way, I need to convert the units on the top in pounds into grams, and I need to convert the units on the bottom in quarts into milliliters. And so what is that going to look like? So I always talk about coming up with roadmaps for a problem. Notice that when you're converting both the numerator and the denominator, this means you're going to have two roadmaps. So for my numerator's roadmap, let's note that I'm going to start with pounds and I want to get into grams. And so in order to do this, I want to come up to the top here and, and note whether I was given any conversion factors that will be useful. Well, I've got a relationship between pounds and kilograms, so that seems like a good starting point. So I could take my pounds into kilograms utilizing that conversion factor that I was given up top. And then once I'm in kilograms, this is just a prefix conversion where I want to get kilograms into the base unit of grams. And so my roadmap for the top, for the numerator, is going to be pounds to kilograms and then kilograms to grams. For the denominator, my roadmap is going to start with quarts, and I want to get this into milliliters. Well, if I come up top here and look for a useful conversion factor, the only one I have for volume is gallons to liters. So I know if I can get my quarts into gallons that then I can convert to liters and once I'm in liters I can get to milliliters. So quarts are going to go to gallons first so that I can use that conversion factor I was given up top and then gallons will be converted into liters using that conversion factor and then from liters to get to milliliters this is again just another one of those uh, utilizing the metric prefixes chart to get from the base unit into a unit that has prefixes or has a prefix. Um, so note here that both these roadmaps, I can do them all sort of in one long step. I just need to remember that there's kind of two separate sequences of steps that are involved here. And so rather than intermixing them together, I usually do one and then the other. So I'm going to start off by worrying about the numerator conversion. And so for the numerator conversion, I need to first go from pounds to kilograms. So I know pounds is going to be on the bottom and kilograms is going to be on the top. Then I need to go from kilograms to grams, and so I know my kilograms is going to be on the bottom and my grams is going to be on the top. And so I can note here that at this point with these conversion factors that I'm going to be putting in, that I've taken care of the numerator, right? I'm going to end up in grams. And that's pretty standard. You know, we've done conversions of the numerator a number of times. That should look really familiar. So now let's deal with the denominator and see how this is a little different. So for the denominator, notice that the units are in the bottom now. They're in the denominator. So in order to cancel out units in the denominator, that means I need to put the unit that's canceling out in the numerator this time. So this is opposite of what we normally do when we're trying to convert the numerator units. The denominator units are going to set up in the opposite way. And as long as you recognize that things cancel out when they're on the top and on the bottom, it's still the same general rule. It just may feel a little different if you haven't done this before. Um, to, if you've gotten used to, oh, the unit I'm canceling out always goes on the bottom, notice that that's only the rule for the numerator, right? The unit that cancels out goes on the bottom if it's in the numerator, it goes in the uh, on the top if it's in the denominator, right? So if we're trying to cancel out quartz in the denominator, we need quartz now on top in the numerator. Um, so I'm trying to get quartz into gallons, so that means my bottom part is going to be gallons on this next step. And then uh, same thing, I want to get gallons into liters. Well, gallons is in the denominator right now, so that means in the next conversion I need gallons in the numerator. And so liters are going to be on the bottom. And then last but not least, liters into milliliters. That means my liters are going to be on the top, and I want my milliliters on the bottom. And so if I, can't, if I go through and cancel these out now, notice quarts are going to cancel out gallons are going to cancel out, liters are going to cancel out, and I'm left with milliliters. And if you note here, we can see that grams is in the numerator and milliliters is in the denominator, and that's how we want them to be when we have density. So that's kind of like a nice way to sort of finally check that. You know, what, what do I have left in this long expression that hasn't canceled out yet? I have my grams in the numerator and my milliliters in the denominator. Hey, that matches what I should have for density, so I'm ready to go. 
Okay, so the last thing we need to do here is just plug in all the numbers for these conversion factors as they associate with their units. So for the kilograms to pounds uh, unit conversion, I come back up here and note this is 1.00 kilograms for every 2.20 pounds. So 1.00 kilograms, that goes with the kilograms. Uh, 2.20 goes with the pounds. Going from grams to kilograms, hopefully you guys are starting to get used to this by now. If you've watched a number of these videos or if you just feel good about uh, prefix conversions, I know that one kilogram is equal to one times 10 to the third grams, right? So that kilo stands for 10 to the third. Then when I go from quarts to gallons, um, this is one you just should have memorized. So there's four quarts in every one gallon and those numbers are exact numbers. Uh, so they don't factor in with uh, sig figs. Going from gallons to liters, that is the conversion we have up top here that we need. So there's 1.000 gallons for every 3.78541 liters. So 1.000 gallons and 3.78541 liters. Again, lots of sig figs on that conversion factor, so um, they won't limit the sig figs in the final answer. Lastly, we have the liters to milliliters conversion. Again, I could do this with my prefix definitions, but just to point out that it's totally fine if you have this memorized. A lot of you might already know that one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. So if you know that off the top of your head, you can use that conversion factor as given um, like this. Okay, if I'm multiplying this all across, I'm going to point out that at the very beginning, the crucial first step is to remember that this time we're not just starting with a number in the numerator, we've also got a number in the denominator that needs to be part of the calculation. So I usually start off here by doing 9.26 divided by four. That would be my first calculation. So if you notice, I made a big stink about how you didn't have to do this solving for the density in pounds per one quart up top here um, in order to get this problem started. But notice that we are still gonna mathematically do that calculation when we go to calculate our final answer. So even though I didn't need to express my starting point as the pounds per one quart, I could just write it as the numbers I was given, I'm still gonna calculate this number in terms of going across this entire calculation. Um, so that is still important. So 9.26 divided by four, then I'm gonna divide by 2.2, multiply by one times 10 to the third, multiply by four, divide by 3.78541, and divide by a thousand. And yes, you can type that entire thing as one long line into your calculator if you want to. Um, and I encourage that a lot of times because it helps you avoid accidentally rounding something partway through the calculation. So if I type that one long string into my calculator, I, oops, sorry about that. I'm gonna end up with 1.11192 grams. And that's the number the calculator is gonna give you, but let's not forget that we aren't just gonna end up with grams for our units, we've also got the milliliters in the denominator. So this is all over one milliliter. Now in terms of sig figs, we've got three sig figs in this problem based off the two numbers we were given with at the beginning. Um, and none of these unit conversions are gonna affect uh, or I should say are going to make the number of sig figs less than that because we either have the same number of sig figs or fewer sig or sorry more sig figs in each one of these uh, conversion factors or we have a situation where the numbers have infinite sig figs right so you know paying attention to sig figs here we can actually just go based off the numbers we were given at the beginning and so three sig figs gets us to just 1.11 so if I was going to report this final answer I would say 1.11 time or not times 10 <laughs> 1.11 grams per milliliter. And so notice it's not important to necessarily say it's over one milliliter for your final answer, but it is important to remember to include both those units, right? So it is grams per milliliter.